Number one is congruent by what, Kelly? Side, side, side. All three sides are congruent. So I can go side, side, side. All right, number two is congruent by what, Nishat? SAS. SAS. What angles did you have to mark? Mm -hmm. B and C. And why were you able to mark both? Mm -hmm. They're alternate interior angles. And we can use alternate interior angles because these two lines are parallel. Yep, you need parallel lines in order to use alternate interior angles. Okay. Uh, Jackson. Side angle side. And what else did you have to mark between the side and the angle? What else needed to be marked up here? The same side. So BS needed to be congruent to BS. And why can I say that those are congruent? By. Oh, they're not angles, though. It's a side. BS is congruent to BS. By what? How do we know what's congruent? Side. Reflexive. Reflexive because it's the same side, right? Anytime it's a shared side, it's reflexive. Right. Uh, Zach, number four. SSS, what other piece of information did you need to mark? NQ is congruent to NQ what? Same side. So it, when I in my reasoning, I would have to write reflexive. Yep. All right, the hard one, number five, Brian. Oh, not congruent. Why? Is there anything else up here that I can mark? No. Oh, yes, there is. I can mark my vertical angles. I sure can. But does that make my triangles congruent? Why? Because it's not in between my two sides. Good. It's got to be in between my two sides. All right. And six, Audrey. Okay. So I know you weren't here, so we're gonna, I'm going to help you out with this one, okay? XZ can be congruent to XZ because it's a shared side, right? And help, class, help her out. If I'm done a shared side, it's reflexive. Okay, if this is a right angle, it's a right angle, right? So I've got a side, I've got two sides, and I've got the angle in between it. So I can say that those are congruent by side angle side. Okay? All right, how are we doing number one? We did number one together, right? All right, so we should be good with number one. How are we doing number two? Good, no need me to go through number two? Good. All right. Number three. Yes. Nod your heads because I saw some of your number threes and they were not pretty. All right. So let's put in our information that they give us. A, B, congruent to D, E. That's given. A, B is parallel to D, E. That's given. C, Midpoint of AE. That's given. And then right here, I'm just going to go ahead and write what they want me to prove. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDC. I don't know the reason yet, but I'm going to write it there. Because now it doesn't look so daunting, right? I've only got five blanks I have to fill in. Okay. So let's mark. I've got AD is congruent to DE. Um, let's go with C is the midpoint of A. Anytime I see something is the midpoint, I need to know what it splits it into. Okay, so C is the midpoint of A E. What does C split them into? It splits it into two separate sides, which is A C is congruent to C E. So A C is congruent to C E because that guy cuts it into two parts, right? So that 
was the definition of a midpoint. Now, I saw some of you had written down DC is congruent to CB. Does it tell us anything about line B or line DB? No. It doesn't tell us that it's the midpoint. So I can't say anything about those, those two sides. I don't know anything about those two sides. Okay? I do know that AB is parallel to DE. Okay? So I have two sides, right? I've got this side and this side. And I need the angle that's in between those two sides, right? Okay, well, what angles are in between those two sides? Angle CAB and angle CEB. Can I state that those are congruent? I sure can. So let's go ahead and do it. Angle I'm going to go BAC. Does it matter what order I put them in? Kind of. Okay. And, but my A just has to be in the middle. Okay. So I could have gone BAC or CAB. Okay. Is congruent to CED. And I could write this as CED or DEC. Either one. Make sure, though, that you put your angle in front of them. Okay. And what kind of angles do we have? Alternate interior angles. And I can use alternate interior angles because I have. Parallel lines. parallel lines, yeah. And if I have parallel lines, I can use alternate interior angles. Okay. Some of us yesterday wanted to use vertical angles. Totally acceptable. Okay. But would it have given me SAS? No, because my angle would have been not in between my two sides. Okay. So why are these congruent? Side angle side. Okay. Um. Contango. We don't want to do that? Okay. Alright, so our givens, yx is congruent to xz, given yx, xz, and then it says wx bisects angle yxz. So we need to actually take a look at that angle that gets bisected. So y and z gets bisected this big angle right here, right? And if an angle gets bisected, what gets cut into two? An angle, right? So it's going to create two angles, okay? If an angle, if I have an angle bisector, it's going to create two angles. And my two angles that are up there that it gets cut into is angle. Angle. Oh no. Guys, with this angle right here, this is my big angle, right? Yxz is what's getting bisected, right? So my two angles is going to be this angle and this angle, right? So one angle is yxw is congruent to angle zx. W. Okay, so if you've got to find those two smaller angles that are in there, that X has to be your middle letter. And what is my reason? Definition of an angle bisector, yeah. Okay, so if I'm using angle bisector, I'm creating two angles. Be careful with that. One of my classes today was creating two sides, and that didn't make any sense. Okay. What other piece of information do we know up there? A shared side. What is my shared side? OXY is not shared. WX is congruent to WXY. That is reflexive. They share a side. Okay, so triangle WYX, and I'm just grabbing it right here, is congruent to triangle W. Z, X, and Y. S, A, S. Alright, so we have learned side, side, side. If I have three, all three sides are congruent, we're good, right? We've learned side 
angle side, if I have the angle in between two sides, okay? Yeah, there's three more that we're going to learn today. Okay, and honestly, I think today's are easier than yesterday's, kind of, sort of. Okay, we have angle, side, angle. Okay, so that means we're going to have two angles, right? And our side has to be in the middle. We have angle, angle, side. So that means I've got two angles and a side. So basically, as long as I have two angles and a side, I'm good. Okay, it's just a matter of differentiating is my side in between my angles or is my side not in between my two angles. Okay, so we're going to be dealing a lot with angles today. And then the last one that we're just going to touch on, which isn't bad, is called hypotenuse length. And what do I have to have in order to have a hypotenuse and a length? What kind of a triangle? I have to have a right triangle. Hypotenuse leg only works with right triangles. Okay? So if you notice, the only thing that doesn't work is if I have two sides and if my angle is not in between them. Okay? And so you can always think to yourself, is my angle in between my two sides? And if it's not, then it doesn't work because they don't allow us to have donkeys in school. <laughs> okay, you can always say that to yourself. I can't bring a donkey to school, so therefore that does not work. I tell you, that's the way to remember it. All right, so our first one that we're going to talk about: angle, side, angle. So I'm going to have two angles, and I'm going to have the side that's in between. Okay. So let's flip, let's actually go all the way to number three. Okay, so you're going to have to flip the page. We're going all the way to number three. What page are we on? 31, thank you. Alright, so we have angle B, A, C. Let's see where it's angle B, E, C. What is it given? Is the midpoint of AE of its given, and I'm going to just go ahead and write angle A or triangle ABC, congruent to triangle EDC, but I don't know why yet. Okay, I've only got five blades to fill up. Doesn't that feel a little bit better if I fill everything out and I'm like, whoo, I'm like halfway done right now. All right. All right, so I'm going to mark these. Does everyone know how to mark their angles? So I think that's part of our issue right now. Okay, so to figure out what angle, so B, A, C, okay, so if I go from B to A to C, what angle do I create? This guy right here, right? Okay, and then if I go from D to E to C, it's the triangle or the angle that gets created by those three letters. Does that make sense? Is that a little bit helpful? All right, so those are congruent. And then it says C is the midpoint of AE. So C is the midpoint of AE. How many lines does that create? Two congruent lines. What are my two congruent lines? AC is congruent to CE because of a midpoint. Alright, so I'm going to mark that guy and I'm going to mark that guy. Okay, so I have an angle and I have a side. Okay, so I either need another side, which I'm going to tell you we don't have another side right now. I need another angle. Do I have another angle up there somewhere? Where? What's my, what are, what, 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 what kind of angles do I have? Vertical angles. I have vertical angles. So this guy is going to be congruent to this guy, we just have to name it. Angle. Sure. If we're going to go A, C, B is congruent to angle E, C, E. There you go. Or E, C, D. Either one. I heard E, C, D. And why are those congruent? Those are 
are vertical, the vertical angles we just read. Okay, and now to figure out what I read. Okay, I have two angles and a side, right? So I have two choices. I have angle, side angle, or angle, angle, side. So we look at it. Is my side in between my two angles? Yeah, so then when I write it down here, I want my S for side in between my two A's for angles. No, well, no, because all the ones that we did yesterday that were that were not congruent were doggy. <laughs> All right, so then our other one is angle angle side. Okay, the only difference between angle side angle and angle angle side is that my side that I have to do it isn't in between my two angles. Okay, so number four, YZ bisects angle WYX. Angle Y, W, Z, congruent to angle Y, X, Z, triangle, W, Y, Z, congruent to X, triangle, W, X, Z. Don't forget your symbols. Always have angles in front of angles, triangles in front of angles. Okay? So, we've got angle Y, W, Z, is in the same. Y, X, Z is the same angle. It says Y, Z bisects. So we've got an angle, Y, W, Y, X. W, Y, X is this big angle, right? And if there's a bisector, it's going to split it into two angles. Okay, so I'm going to split it into this angle and this angle. So one angle is angle W, Y, Z. It's congruent to angle XYZ by definition of an angle bisector, yeah? Okay, and now I have connected triangles. If I have connected triangles, what do I automatically look for? The shared side. Do I have a shared side? I sure do. My shared side is YZ is congruent to YZ by reflexive. You guys are going to have reflexive property ingrained in your head. So I got, all right, so I have two angles on the side. Is my side in between my two angles or outside? Outside it, so that's where it makes it. Let's look at number seven. Okay, so we have LG. Oh, not congruent is what's that mean? Parallel to JM. I have H is the midpoint of LM. So basically, H is the midpoint of LM. So what does that tell me? H is the midpoint. Yep, and what are my two equal ones? LH is congruent to HM by definition of a midpoint. Alright, now I need what else? I either need two more sides. Can I get two more sides? Can I get one more side? I can. I don't have any information to get any more sides, right? So that means if I can't do any more sides, what do I need? How many angles? I need two angles. Now here's the deal. With my two angles, I've got some options right now. 
Okay, there's actually a couple different ways that we could write this proof. Okay, because I've got parallel lines, right? So if I've got parallel lines, give me some angles that are congruent. Okay, so I heard LHG is congruent to MHG. Not necessarily because I have parallel lines, but because I have vertical angles, which is just fine. So vertical angles with angle LHG is congruent to angle MHJ, I heard. Alright, so now I just need another angle. HGL, I heard. HGL is this one. It's going to be congruent to which one? HJM, yep. So angle HGL is congruent to angle HJM. By alternate interior angles. So now, do I have enough information to say triangle LGH is congruent to triangle MJH? Yup, by, rule oh, careful, angle, angle, side. Okay, so what other angle is up here congruent? Yeah, this is congruent to this by what? That's also alternate interior. So if I would have used that instead of this alternate interior, what would I have put here? I would have done is my side now in between those two angles. So instead of AAS, I would have put angle, side, angle. Okay? So as you can see, as we get going, especially tomorrow when we do this, when we put all five of them together, there's going to be more than one way to do some of these. Okay. Hypotenuse leg is the only other one that we have to talk about, and I'm just going to touch on it. Okay. What's the hypotenuse of a right triangle? How do I know which one's the hypotenuse? The longest one, or the one that's across from my right angle, right? Okay. So in any right triangle, if I have the hypotenuse and the leg that are congruent, then those are congruent by hypotenuse leg. Okay. You're always, if you have right triangles, you're, you're looking for a hypotenuse leg. Okay? Alright, so I know this stuff isn't easy, okay? but I want to get